So in the last series of videos, we covered, you know, how to use the various quad folds and drop cards and, uh, you know, how to debate with people on the street, how to interact with random strangers. And so I wanted to uh, go ahead here and cover a, a whole different aspect of communicating with these people when we're talking about abolition, when we're uh, preaching the gospel, you know, this is, a, a, I believe, a very important aspect just to communicating, especially when we're trying to make um, a specific point and trying to get somebody to see things from our side. And so I wanted to cover today nonverbal communication, body language. Um, body language is so much more important than most people think. I mean, if you go into sales training, they'll teach it to you. Um, in, in communications uh, courses, uh, when you talk, when you see people who are on TV, like they've gone through trainings on how to move, how to speak with their hands, things like that. And so I wanted to cover a few things um, that I've learned over the years, both through some experience as well as I've done some research into the subject. And I wanted to cover, uh, you know, first off, just the basics of how, um, how you want to present yourself. You know, when, we, uh, when we're preaching the gospel to people, when we're talking to people about abolition, when we're speaking to young women outside of a clinic, we want to present ourselves as an authority. We want to, um, you know, the Bible says to boldly proclaim the gospel. And so we want to be bold. We want to be sure of ourselves. Um, you know, if you stand and you have a conversation and it's, yeah, I, I think and I believe and, you know, my personal opinion, um, then you're just stating your opinion. You're just telling somebody what you believe. You're not laying down the truth, even if what you're saying is true. And in, the, in that person's mind, they're going to discount part of what you say based solely on the fact that you're not, that you don't believe that you're authority, so why should they believe that you're an authority? And so when we look at that, I think there's kind of like this list of do's and don'ts that we can go through. I mean, we're not going to cover everything on body language. Like I said, there's whole university classes based on the topic, but we are going to cover um, a small part of it. And so the first thing I want to say is what you do not want to do when you are on the streets. So when you are debating or engaging with somebody, the very first thing you do not want to do is cross your arms. This right here is a sign of disinterest. It says that, you know, I don't want to be here talking to you, but I'm here and fine, whatever, I'll listen to you. You, you don't want that. You want to be out. You want to be engaging. Um, another part of that is, you know, a lot of us, especially when you get nervous or when you get bored, you want to stick your hands in your pockets. When you're talking to somebody, unless you are pulling something out of your pocket that is pertinent and relevant to the conversation, your pockets don't exist. Like I would literally make it a general rule, your pockets don't exist. I mean, sometimes maybe if you're listening to somebody, you know, when you're taking in what they're talking about, maybe, you know, like stick your thumbs in your pocket or maybe like cross an arm or something. But even then, you really want to keep your body open. Another thing that you have to watch out for is that like slumped shoulder, kind of lazy, lackadaisical look. Again, we don't want this at all. When I talk, I talk with my body pronounced. I talk open and you want to create an atmosphere, like a powerhouse atmosphere. You want to create that image that you are an authority, that you know what you're saying, that what you're saying is truth, and that the person you're talking to needs to hear what you're saying. Um, you know, along with that is, you know, a lot of facial things, um, you know, frowning when somebody says something you disagree with, you know, if, if you can, you want to keep away from that. Um, you sit there and you lick your lips a lot, or if you start chewing on your lip, it's actually telling the person that you're not taking them seriously. Um, when somebody else is talking, looking around, they need to be your focus. The whole world disappears except them. You know, especially a lot of us, we go to like music festivals and farmers markets and, 
you know, I spend a lot of time at the major, um, uh, the major train stations in our city, and there's people everywhere. There's things going on. There's horns honking. There's music playing, and it's really easy when somebody else is talking to you, especially when you recognize that what they're saying is wrong, or if you've heard it all before, to be like, oh, nice car. Like, hey, dude, oh, sorry, yeah, I, I didn't mean to get distracted. And again, we're giving the impression there that what they have to say is unimportant and that you're not interested in being a part of this conversation. So now I wanna cover a few things that you do want to do when you're out there. First thing, shoulders up. Keep your shoulders up, keep them pulled back, keep your chest put out. You know, it seems to some people like you're intimidating, but what you're doing here is you are creating that atmosphere of authority, and your body is communicating just as much as your words. You want them to believe and recognize that you are an authority and that what you have to say is truth. Use your hands when you're talking. It shows an emphasis on certain words, or it creates a, a third dimension, so to speak, to the conversation. Most of us, we want to talk with our hands when we're holding a conversation with a friend, but then when you're talking to a random stranger, you want to get stiff as a board. Remember that you're comfortable here, that, that you need to feel and look and sound like you're comfortable, like this is your atmosphere. Um, I actually just saw a really amazing uh, talk on body language and one of the things they talked about is when you're demonstrating a point, like when you're saying this is truth, one of the most important things that you can do uh, non-verbally is to be spread out. You know, arms out, shoulders out, chest up, and again, you're, it, it's in the animal kingdom, it's actually an intimidation. It's how somebody says, I'm in charge, I'm the authority. But here what you're using this as is to say, you know, pay attention to me, listen to what I'm saying. And people will actually follow nonverbal cues. And so you wanna make sure that you have that going on. At the same time, smiling. You know, people don't think twice about it, but smile, be happy that you're saying things. You know. Don't, of course, be like, 3,500 children are killed every day, but smile, especially when you're getting into the gospel and into freedom in Christ and things like that. Keep a smile on your face. Keep a positive atmosphere. If it's nothing but this downtrodden, depressing, angry um, atmosphere, then the person that you're talking to is not going to want to be engaged. So keep that atmosphere positive and, of course, as you say different things and as you touch different structures or different subjects, remember that your facial structure is speaking to them just like your hands are, just like your entire body is, just like your words. Your face is speaking to them, both when they're talking and when you're talking. So make sure that, you know, especially for people who get a little bit nervous with strangers, that your face, your body, your lips, every part of you is communicating your point. Now the last thing that I want to add in here is uh, your feet. Now a lot of people are going to go out and you know you get the you get the foot shuffling and uh, sometimes it's because you're antsy and you want to keep, get out of the conversation but a lot of times it's a it's a nervous tick especially for somebody who is not wholly comfortable going out and talking to strangers and so I can't stress the importance enough to you plant your feet solidly Get, get them, I would say, somewhere around shoulder width, plant them there, and don't move them. Because again, your body language is, is uh, communicating to the other person in the conversation your surety, your firmness. You are standing on the solid rock of Christ Jesus. You are standing on the solid rock of Scripture. Let their foundation shake. Your foundation is firm and you make sure that you're telling them that.